All right, we have a slightly long question, but not that long of an answer, so we'll just barrel through it. Our statement reads, a very long solenoid of radius A with n turns per unit length carries a current IS. Coaxial with this solenoid at radius B much greater than A is a circular ring of wire with resistance R. When the current in the solenoid is gradually decreased, a current IR is induced in the ring. Calculate IR in terms of DIS dt. B. The power IR squared R delivered to the ring must have come from the solenoid. Confirm this by calculating the pointing vector just outside the solenoid. The electric field is due to the changing flux in the solenoid. The magnetic field is due to the current in the ring. Okay, good things to note. Integrate over the entire surface of the solenoid and check that, the reco that you recover the total the recover the correct total power. Okay, so the electric field uh, again from the uh, solenoid and the magnetic field from the ring. Remember, pointing vector is uh, E cross B. All right. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's deal with part A. Clearly, this is best done through flux. Um, go figure. So we have E equals negative d phi dt. And if we just plug in what phi is, that's b dot dA in the integral form. So take the time to root it out. Uh, again, we have a solenoid here. So we get mu naught nis z dot s ds d phi in the z direction. Again, from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to a for the radius. Uh, again, we've seen this before. Surface integral, not that big a deal. All right, so plug it on through. And now you see where we get the time derivative uh, with respect to this thing. So the, the only thing that changes with time here is the DIS, or is the IS. So the time derivative goes to that, and you're left with the E, or EMF, of negative mu naught and pi a squared DIS dt. And here we see that if we replace this with Ohm's law, we get V equal I R. So E equal I uh, subscript R times R. And so uh, big R, or excuse me, the current of R is equal to E over big R. And so you plug it all in and you see constants over R DIS DT. All right, no big deal. Pretty quick to find. Um, now, just outside the solenoid, we have the induced electric field and the magnetic fields. Um, uh, that should not be a minus sign. It should be an equal sign, so my bad. Probably saving space. But nonetheless, we can find the, uh, we, from the flux, we can find the E field, Faraday's law. Um, the line integral goes uh, to E times 2 pi A. Again, circumference, no big deal. Uh, D phi, we just calculated above. So plug that in. You see that pi A factor, pi A cancels. No big deal there. Um, solve for E, and you get negative mu naught and A over 2, DIS over DT in the fiat direction. The ring has a magnetic field of, again, we saw that from Chapter 5. Uh, clearly, the rings are being common with the stuff. So, But again, we need to know this because the E comes from the solenoid, B comes from the ring, and now we can find the pointing vector. Okay, you notice that um, we'll have a mu and mu cancel from the E field, although you could take it from the B field if you want. Again, we have a bunch of constants here, so the cross product is only concerned with the phi and z direction. Kick all those constants out front. Okay, again, since we're in a cylindrical coordinate system, phi cross z gives us s hat, and I set it up this way so we can see that the cross product is only of those unit vectors. Okay, so if we simplify this down to what we know we can, we get a mu IR over 4, again, negative sign from the E field, times DIS DT, and then we put all the, uh, feet, like, A and B onto the uh, B squared plus Z squared to the 3 halves uh, fraction, so we can see that when we integrate, a lot of things come together. Uh, the total power, then, is equal to the... Um, or the power, right, is equal to the pointing vector integrated over some differential area. Um, here, we got to be careful. And since we're in the S hat direction, we know that our differential area has to be in the D phi D Z um, limits at A. Okay, so it would be S D phi D Z, but that S has to be at the boundary A. Okay, plugged it all through, we get a bunch of constants. And then you see we have negative a squared, b squared in, pulling out front, mu naught ir over 4, and then 
DIS over DT. And now we're left with a couple integrals here that need to be handled with care. Mainly this uh, DZ integral, which is from negative infinity to infinity. Um, what we notice in the integration, though, is that the since the this would be a... Um, you would end up with a one half power in the denominator again. The Z parts cancel, but we're left with the, um, uh, uh, what am I saying? We're left with the B squared from the inside as well. So um, go ahead and uh, simplify that down. Again, use Symbol Lab if you need to, or some other Mathematica. Verify your results so you don't go stir crazy. Um, you see the B squareds cancel. We have a two and two cancel with the four, and everything else boils down nicely. And you see that if we factor this in a nice manner, we get negative pi mu naught a squared n dis over dt times ir, which if, re if you recall, that was exactly the curly e that we found before in part a, and thus the power, which is equal to irv times ir, is equal to, well, yeah, so iv, um, uh, so whatever, pass it on through, you see we get the recovered power and it is consistent.